Most of you, I believe, are entrepreneurial in spirit. You may not yet have your own business. You may be younger in life, and you may be moving toward that direction the day when you can have your business, buy your business, start your business. You may be an employee right now. That's okay. That's how I started some 40 years ago. I did not start right out of the gate out of my getting my licensure and my education, passing the boards in dentistry. I did not start right out as a business owner. It took a few years, but I started building wealth almost from day one, actually before I became a dentist. That's a story for a little bit later. You may be in business right now and doing the things that you were trained to do in terms of your, especially your profession, whether it's healthcare or other business, doesn't make a difference. You've got technical skills and you took those to the forefront to begin those. You may be in a position where you've done this for quite a few decades. You may be on the point where you'd like to make the exit or start to transition out, buying back that time that you so fervently gave up during those years of sacrifice. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about why did we get into business? Again, for those of us who are in business, those of you who are thinking about getting into business, why, why do we want to do that? Well, it's always comes back to, we want to be in charge. We want to be our own boss. Now, the reality is once you get into business, for most of us, it's really becoming self-employed. Robert Kiyosaki talks about it in his four quadrants. It's moving from employee to being self-employed. Being self-employed, yes, you do get to be in charge, but you really have a lot of bosses. You have a lot of bosses out there. Uh, the federal government is a boss. Compliance, regulations, HR. Uh, you have customers, clients, patients who effectively, they aren't our boss, but if we don't toe the mark and meet the caliber of the standards of the service and our products that we provide, then they go away. So we, even though we have, we are in charge of our future, which is what we all want, there are many constraints that make it not quite as freeing as we thought. But we got into being in business or being in the profession that we are because we wanted to have that freedom. We wanted to have security. We wanted some peace of mind that we could forge our own path forward. And I think that's really why we are entrepreneur, entrepreneurs, why we are capitalists, because we want to do that. It takes, it comes with a lot of responsibility. No question about it. It comes with a lot of risk, a lot of liability. Anybody who's been in business for any period of time understands that. There's some days when you just come home and you go, boy, if I could sell it, that business tomorrow, I'd be out. I hear those stories all the time from colleagues and dentists and other business owners. I've been there. I've been in those same positions where it's like, boy, if there was an out like tomorrow, I'd take it. But there usually isn't at that point. Usually we have to stay rowing that boat longer. Here's what, what I think about when I go back and I was scratching this out on a really a, literally a back of an envelope and if you're watching this uh i'm gonna hold it up this is my back of the envelope um scratching i don't know if you can see that at all but um scratching out going back in time and thinking how did we get started doing this well we had to invest in ourselves first that's where it starts we don't just fire up a business or get a license to go do something we have to invest in ourselves first we have to get some level of education training either it's vocation professional technical whatever it might be that takes time depending upon how up up the scale, up the ladder, you have to go to gain those certifications. Whatever that might be, it takes time. It takes investing in yourself. And oftentimes today, that comes with taking on debt, does it not? Student loan debt is what I'm talking about. I'm not going to have the conversation about whether it's worth it or not. Let's just say what it is. You're investing in yourself in those early years. And that's where it should start. Invest in yourselves. Get the education. Get the training so you can go out and do what? Start providing a service and or product to the world or to a community or a certain customer client patient base that will start paying you back money and the greater the problems you can solve to people who are willing and capable of paying for the solution to those problems the more you get paid and that's how we typically start to go up the ladder in terms of creating more income that's the goal right more income now with that more with that greater income we can go from being an employee which is where we first start out generally uh, to actually owning the business so now we own the now we're going to start a business or acquire a business and that again typically takes some debt right so we've taken on debt to invest in ourselves we maybe start paying some of that debt down but we don't have it paid off yet so we now incur more debt to establish some form of a business i'm not saying that's bad i'm saying that's the way i did it that's the way most people have to do it so now you're taking you the investment in yourself the capabilities that you have created by working hard and studying and creating the talents and skill sets you have, combining that with a business platform of some kind. Mine was dentistry. And putting those two together, now I'm leveraging 
not only my skill set, but I'm leveraging a business platform where I'm essentially leveraging in a mutually beneficial way other people's time skill sets, people that become staff and employees, um, maybe other providers, associate doctors or hygienists in, in, in my world. I'm leveraging those people and with the idea that by leveraging those, providing a service to more people uh, at a greater volume, if you will, that I'm going to create more value. I get typically more income and the business should also gain in some growth equity potential. That's that's the goal. That's the way we do it. And that's where the focus generally is for the majority, if not the entire working career of most people's lives. Oh, yes, we we do things to increase our lifestyle. So you can say, well, that's a plus. Well, it is a plus and it should be part and parcel of you working hard. The problem is most people just ratchet up their lifestyle to be even if not even more than what their productive income can produce. That's a, again, a story for another day. But that's typically what people do, because as long as you can work and you can be productive and, and create the income, you can entitle to whatever lifestyle you want. The problem is that that becomes like treading water. And I know so many people, it doesn't matter how high the income is, how high the trade trading time for dollars is, that that treading water, just keeping above, keeping above, keeping above with no possible exit is what harangues them, or what I used to call, it's 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 the chains, it's the golden handcuffs to a business, you, business you created through your hard work, but you really got yourself in a position where it's a ball and chain and you you can't find an exit. Those who don't go that far and, and are trading, trading time for dollars or treading water, essentially what the next model is after you pay taxes and again unfortunately um, as you increase your income your taxes also go up uh, that's again a different conversation from the day how to mitigate taxes the right way wrong way maybe i'll touch on that in this episode a little bit maybe next time but the issue here is that we've got lifestyle we've got taxes what do we do with any extra money that we have uh, we call owner's equity or owner's distributions so you should pay yourself a fair wage right pay yourself a fair wage Maybe out of that wage, it doesn't take all of your income for lifestyle and all of our taxes. So you may have some left over there. And if you've got a profitable business, then what do you do with, again, those extra earnings? Well, they can be distributed to you or they can be reinvested back in the business. And that's what a lot of us do early on. We want to increase that business operation if we're good at it. If we see that it's a business that is building, but it's also the critical piece is, is that business or businesses, are they allowing us to have some of the freedom that we desire? For most people, no. The answer is no. And so again, they get into a trap, building more and more and more, and maybe creating more income, but that income has to go back into the business, hopefully for a growth exit at some point down the road. But again, that could be many, many years down the road, giving up the time, the freedom, the opportunity that, doggone it, that business was supposed to provide for in the first place. When we th first thought about it in school, being in charge of our life and being in charge of our time, we lose that ability. We lose that time. Until some mystical day somewhere down the road in our 60s, where we finally have the opportunity to quote retire. That's a bad construct. It's a but it's an age-old construct, and too many are on that path. And some of you listening right now, you may be early in, in life. Listen to me closely because you can change this. Some of you are mid-career, you still have a great opportunity to change it. Those of you who are down the road in maybe your 50s and approaching 60s or so. You're just ready to look for an exit, and I'll talk to you as well, because you may or may not be able to make that exit, but how you handle that exit is going to be critical to your future and your freedom. Mm -hmm.